Welcome back to the channel. I am in the uh, lovely prelude here today. I want to talk to you guys about what it's been like driving a 30 year old JDM car. Basically as a daily driver for the last six months. I picked this car up down in Tennessee. I'm in Massachusetts, but I picked the car up in Tennessee. It had 60,000 miles on it, which is crazy for the, a car this year. It's a 1988. Nothing special. I really just loved the body of it. I wanted to pick out an older car that I think would be really unique, and I really don't see any of these cars anywhere up here. When I picked up the car initially, the speedometer, the fuel gauge, and the blinkers weren't working. That probably segues right into my first point, which is expect problems. If you're picking up an old car, you just, you have to assume that there's gonna be issues that are either currently going on or stuff that's gonna come up kind of spontaneously. I recommend keeping a little savings account, you know, whether it's just like some cash you wanna keep on hand, you know, maybe a separate savings account, but point is, make sure you have some funds set aside just in case something goes wrong. I mean, I'm assuming this is the car that you want to keep around for a while. Things are gonna go wrong, so make sure you have the funds available to fix that problem when it does arise. So my next thing about driving a car this old, it's slow. It's a 1988 Honda Prelude. It's got the four cylinder engine. It's not the VTEC. It's the carbureted, not fuel injected. I'm pretty limited on the power gains I can get from this car or this engine. One of the biggest surprises to me when I first got the car and started driving it is really how slow it is. Just getting on the highway right now, it's like I have to put my foot all the way down on the gas. 40, 45. Oh, I'm not even at 50 yet. Don't expect it to be the fastest thing in the world. What I'm trying to say is don't expect it to respond and react like a brand new car or even a 10 year old car. When you're working on a car this old, one of the biggest problems I've found is actually finding parts. There's a lot of older cars like the Civics and the Accords and stuff. You'll still be able to find parts for fairly easily. But this thing, I mean, it's a prelude. They really didn't sell a whole ton of these in the US. They discontinued parts back like 15 years ago. So it's really hard to find parts for this car. You really want to make sure you're doing all that you can for preventative maintenance, you know, oil changes, timing belts, coolant flushes, transmission flushes, brakes, all that good stuff before something goes wrong. Because if these parts break, there's slim chance that I'm finding them brand new. There's an also slim chance that I'm even gonna find used parts. Make sure that you take care of the car and do some preventative maintenance and be gentle with it. This thing's pretty old and I don't wanna crack parts and whatnot. I guess that would be my top three biggest things about driving a car this old. I did get some pretty cool news the other day. I went over to my mechanic shop. Gary has been helping me out with the Prelude since I bought it. I'm actually going back up to Gary's shop today after work. We've got a little something special kind of planned for the channel. We've kind of come to a, an agreement where he's going to somewhat allow me access to a shop and his knowledge, which is more key than anything. Gary's been working on Hondas and Acuras on the performance side for well over like 30 years. So he asked me to kind of be his number one shop to build a relationship of me working on the car and creating this content for you guys. And then also allowing Gary to share what he knows on the channel so you guys can get access to it. I know he was explaining to me one of the things he struggles with is time. Time meaning he has all the knowledge and he's doing the work, but he doesn't have the time to create this content like what I'm doing for you right now. He's gonna basically help me out with the knowledge base on my own car and working on it. And in return, I'm gonna give you guys his knowledge so you can work on your own cars and problem solve and whatnot. We're gonna go up to Gary's shop after work today. I'll see you then. My night runs into morning. All the time. Seems like I'm always chosen. I'm actually doing a little troubleshooting myself on the car. When I first picked it up, the gas gauge was not working. Now you can see it's reading about a little over half a tank. I actually went to Walmart and just picked up like a one gallon gas tank and filled it up. What I'm trying to do now is intentionally run out of gas. I want to see how low I really can go on this tank and then kind of see where the gauge reads because I'm really tired of filling up every 150 miles. Right now I'm at 187 miles, so we'll see how far we make it before I run out of gas. Finally out of work. Gonna head up to Gary's place now. I just gotta get this thing warmed up and we should be on our way.
show you guys the prelude real quick. This is it, man. Auto, Pella, New Hampshire. Let's see what's up. The man himself. <laughs> Here we are. Guys, this is uh, my mechanic, Gary. Whoa. We're gonna be going over troubleshooting today? Yes, troubleshooting. And as I mentioned, daily driving in a 30 year old car mm -hmm. can have its problems, so it's always good to know how to troubleshoot. I am in the shop now. I just wanted to kind of show you around because I'm sure we're gonna be spending a lot of time up here, especially as the weather gets nicer and the car season gets rolling. So as you can see here, Gary is set up with a dyno. He does a lot of performance tuning to these Hondas and Acuras. So this obviously comes in clutch whenever you're trying to test, uh, make sure you're getting the right results. We've got a couple of lifts in here. One and two. He's heat, heat guys. Something I've been missing, been working out in the cold. I'm excited to help Gary out. I think we're gonna get some good stuff going on in the shop. Today, like I said, uh, we're gonna basically run over one specific problem that I believe this car's having and just general troubleshooting things you can do in order to hone in on what the issue is. I did wanna kind of go back to what we were talking about before with driving a 30 year old car as a daily driver. I was talking about a lot about the negatives, you know, a lot of the issues that can arise and things you wanna be prepared for but I didn't want to make it sound like it's a horrible thing to do because I actually love driving the Prelude. One of the great things about driving the car is that it's unique. You know, you don't see a lot of 30 year old cars out there still running, which is awesome that if you can find one, keep it clean. People really appreciate that. The amount of looks, the amount of compliments you get on the car is for me, one of the best things. Another aspect that I love about driving a 30 year old car is just the fact that it's, it's almost like a time machine. Like you're going, it's, it's nothing like what we drive nowadays. I mean, you hop into a new vehicle and it almost feels autonomous. Like there's just not a whole lot of you in the car. And I think with an older car, if you're daily driving it, it's a lot more fun because it's really more man and machine. There's not all these different features. There's not all this technology in the car. For that reason, it makes it a much more enjoyable experience. So that's my take on it. I love having a 30 year old car and I daily drive the shit out of it. So hopefully we can learn a little bit today from Gary and I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. We have a customer's car here. It's a Honda Civic. The issue that they're having is the battery is depleting pretty much overnight. I mean, within like six hours. What we're working with is actually a brand new Honda battery. We have it fully charged. Gary actually went ahead and made sure everything was charged up before we're going to get it. go ahead and test it. Any normal fully charged battery should be reading above 12.5. You can see here we're reading almost at 13.7. So we know the battery is fully charged. What we're gonna do now is kind of figure out what is causing causing the battery to drain so quickly. Gary actually went ahead and tested the electronics inside the car. If you don't know this, your electronics actually do run on minimal power limits while the car is actually shut off. So not enough to necessarily drain the battery, but as the customer stated, this car was dying overnight or within six hours. Something with quite a bit of power draw is draining the battery. Gary actually went ahead and tested all the electronics in the cabin and was able to determine that it's not related to the MICU. It's gotta be something right here in the engine bay. To kind of figure out what's going on in the engine bay to cause the battery issue, Gary's gonna go ahead and just start tapping the negative component there and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're actually getting some noise from this side of the engine. I hope you guys can hear that. We're getting a ticking from this side of the engine, which Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, that means something is drawing the power as soon as the battery is connected. Basically gonna go ahead and just start disconnecting components to see what might be causing that. Now he's gonna go ahead and do the same process. And as you can hear, there's no more ticking at all. And he's basically disconnected this right here, which was what we think was causing the power depletion. To cause the, the juice, usually, even cut shell off the relay, 
was the sucking all the time to cause the juice bigger joint. So we believe that AC compressor is the issue cause the battery drain. Now that we've got the AC disconnected, we're gonna leave that disconnected overnight. Unfortunately, testing a battery isn't always instantaneous. So what the plan is, is to leave the AC disconnected, reconnect the battery, which as you can see, Gary's doing that now. He's basically gonna leave the car and let it sit overnight. What that will tell us is while the AC is disconnected, if the battery still has power to it tomorrow morning, we know that's the problem. If the battery is drained, then we know it's something else. We'll actually take a look at this customer Civic. Pretty cool, he um, actually had some pretty worn out seats in here, the stock Civic base model seats. Gary actually went ahead and put in these pretty sweet SI uh, stage seats. Just to go above and beyond, not only did he replace the seats, but also these door cards, which as you can see, have the same stitching on here, on here. So that just looks really nice. And even on the center console here, I think that is one reason why I've been drawn to Gary's shop is he definitely goes above and beyond, guys. If you guys need any Honda, Acura, um, just really any general car work, I mean, Gary's so knowledgeable that he'll be able to help you out on the custom level, on the maintenance level, and if you're just having any issues. So make sure you, um, you come by, and I'll link his shop down below with the address and the website so you guys can easily find him. Good morning guys, today I am gonna test this vehicle 2009 Honda Civic keep drain the battery. I full charge it last night, I troubleshoot, I disconnect the one out the AC, keep click, take a battery, juice and drain in the six hour. So last night I disconnect here, I wanna test the battery first. So right now my battery is set on 1358, means the whole battery is hold the charge because I don't connect here. Uh, most likely somehow relay right here, probably stuck to cause juice to continue drawing, like you turn on the AC all the time, but it's kinda running, so I believe they will start. New day guys, I am on my way back up to Gary's. I'm picking up some footage from that customer's car that we had worked on. And like I said before, one, the prelude's not gonna start right now because it's so damn cold. But <laughs> as we were working on that car, like I said, we had to let the battery react overnight and see if it was either gonna hold its power or deplete. So I'm not sure how it ended, but I'm gonna go get the footage from Gary as soon as I can get this freaking thing started. I also wanted to ask Gary about some parts that I'm looking into for the Prelude and obviously he's got so much knowledge on it and he's been doing it forever that you know, I trust his, uh, his judgment on the parts that I want. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys up at Gary's. Wait, actually I have not filled up yet and I am on mile 260 reading quarter tank. I envy all of you that live in nicer warmer parts of the country. All you California guys, I know you're upset about the exhaust thing, but it could always be worse. Just got to Gary's shop. I'm gonna go ahead in here real quick and pick up the stuff that he needs me to start editing, but he's got all sorts of cars out here. I think he's got all like the EKs, the Hondas back there. This pretty dope Integra, which honestly, I probably would have scooped this up. Dope shit. Got the goods here. Gary just kind of caught me up on what happened yesterday. So Gary, thank you. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. This is kind of what I'm talking about when I'm saying don't expect a 30 year old car to drive like anything new or even 10 years old because like, oh my God, it's just not, <laughs> it's just not gonna drive like that. Don't expect it to guys. Oh. I'm sorry, Prelude. A few moments later. It finally happened, I'm out of gas. My gas tank still doesn't read empty and there's no fuel light on, but I guess that's what we can get. 287 miles to a tank and it's almost accurate. Now I gotta go out on this freaking highway and try and fill this up. Not the safest place, but all right. Wish me luck. Deal. Uh, I wish I had found a better spot to run out of gas, but I guess that's how it goes. I'm on the side of the highway. I'm filled up now. I'm gonna go hit a gas station, but I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog right now. So thank you guys for watching. Comment down below if you have any uh, anything to say. You know, I like to hear from you guys. And as always, subscribe on our way to 1,000 subscribers. I'll see you guys next time.